Well, today we are going to build a kite buggy. Sorry if the uh, camera's not the perfect angle. I jimmy rigged it up so we can get a few shots of the basic layout of what I'll be doing. So everything can be bought from Home Depot. This is inch and a quarter by 16, one sixteenth wall. And these couplings are galvanized, yes. We're not gonna be welding on the galvanized. I wanted the, the corrosion resistance for the, uh, for the salt that'll be, this will be exposed to. So what I'm gonna do is grind down on the outside, take the zinc off, and it actually fits right in to that pipe. All I have to do is take off the tips of some of these um, hexagon and it should slide right in. So once it slides in, I'll just do some spot welds, drill out a few holes and uh, weld it in and that'll make for a very strong axle once this screws in I'll have over two inches of uh, area that the bolt will be within the uh, axle and it'll be three foot wide the tires are three inches wide so the track will be about 36 37 37 and a half um, 39, sorry. <laughs> um, and this will be the steering tube. I'm waiting for a McMaster to send me some parts. Um, uh, excuse me, Northern, waiting for Northern Tool to send me some parts. And the three quarter bore by it's a one and three eighths inch OD. It fits perfectly into a inch and a quarter black iron pipe. So I'll nip the ends off of this, pop those in, and then I just need to make the, uh, the top and bottom braces for the fork. Um, all right, so let me get to welding and grinding. Okay, so I went ahead and grinded these couplings, three quarter inch couplings. You could see, I just took an edge off and uh, an edge off of here. So now, you can put it directly into the tubing, a little bit tight. And I'll flush that up and then drill two holes on every side and do a spot face weld and fill it up and that will be a strong axle. So we'll do that on both sides with these two nuts <clears throat> and couplings. They'll be ready. Good deal. All right, what I'm gonna do is tack these holes, all of them all around and then I will make sure that centered within the square tubing, not much can make it uh, not centered and it's not that critical since we're making a kite buggy. All right, here we go.
deal. All right, and now I will weld back and forth on one side and the other um, just to try and reduce the warping that will Here we're still good deal. All right, let me get this welded up. All right, so now we're gonna weld these up. Got them pushed into there. And we'll just spot face these holes on every side. Uh, the welder I'm using is Molly the Melter, of course. It's an Everlast Pro, uh, Power Pro Series 164SI. And a little tank there. There's my setup of a Craigslist bought metal and has wheels on it ready to move um, i have it jacked up now to get level um, all right let's fire up the tig welder got trim down the edges so fits it's really nice overlaps a bit so I can put a bead on this corner another bead on this corner um, it should really make it rigid as well uh, this you know, to be pretty much the beefiest part of the kite buggy since this is the uh, I love the most torque about this point on the uh, wraparound frame. What I did do is just had some athletic tape. It's pretty thin and it's cloth. I just put one wrap around um, just to give a little bit of clearance so that when I put it on, I'll clamp it. And then I'll weld it when I pull this off, remove the tape, and I should have just maybe a sixteenth of a uh, wiggle room that I'll be able to slide the tube in and out without any any difficulties. So we'll see how this how this works out.
All right. Let's get this tack welded. square box. Um, I'm going to overlap one like that. Uh, I need to trim down some of the, the excess on one of them to make it fit a little more precisely. Um, <clears throat> also because I don't want to weld through and weld the tubing and I don't want to have to go inside to have to grind out any of the edge of the rounded off part of any kind of a weld so uh, time to trim down one of these edges. portions in the back that will connect the axle to the frame. What I did was I got some inch and a half angle iron. I've cut it into two pieces and I'm going to cut these in half but if I put them together, cut them in half, then I have two that are the exact same length. Just a little less cutting, a little less grinding. And then what I'm going to do is going to make a square tubing. So I will overlap one, trim down one of the edges of the angle iron, and it will uh, slip right in there. And we'll make them about four inches long. And then Put a weld on the top, weld on the other side, and we'll have a boxed in, put one bolt through, and that should make it so we can slip the wrap around tubing <clears throat> and make it disassemble, so you can disassemble it, you know, so you don't use it in the middle of the winter and it can be put away, so. All right, so got the end pieces that will go on. So here's the axle. Just put the bolt through it. This is the one that there's two nuts welded in here, inch and a quarter long. And 
So now, trying to discover what angle these side rails will rise and go forward so they don't hit your hip bones. Um, so what I did as a mechanical engineer and <laughs> thinking logically, um, I took a kite buggy that I've ridden before, um, the Pedalin ST, and I wanted it a little bit wider. So I just overlaid it in a program that I have, um, figured out my degrees and my length. So it's just a quick starting point and it took me all of 30 minutes to do instead of designing from scratch because that just doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? <laughs> and so I know these will be four inches. Um, the total length will be 26. The rise, I don't know exactly, um, but I'm thinking maybe a four inch rise. So I have this sitting up and I want my axle to be diamond side, di like a shape like a diamond so the, the pointy surface would be up. It just helps slough off any you know, salt water, any kind of a um, dust, whatever, sand, and it will add to the rigidity um, being in that orientation. So, all right. I'm going to play with some of these angles and see if I can figure out the best route. All right, here we go. So, finishing up welding this steering tube. Um, got it all tacked, so I did one, um, a quarter bead on one side, and now I'm gonna go ahead and do the full bead on this side. I'll let it cool, go back to the other side. Um, I kinda wanna not do all the welding at once because it can uh, do a lot of distorting. So, all right. There we go. Turned out pretty nice. Um, obviously I'm doing this project to sharpen up on some welding skills since I haven't welded in probably six months. Um, so it's an easy weld there that didn't really, you don't need to have to uh, do a die grinder or any kind of weird grinding if you end up doing a not so great job but this one's going to be tricky uh, just the angle trying to get in there um, crank up the flow of uh, the gas to shield and um, extend my tip out tungsten tip it a little bit out and 
you don't want to mess it up because there's a lot of grinding that is very difficult to do in there. So um, here we go. I'm going to try this and all right. So now we got the steering fork and assembly welded up. Um, Pretty beefy, very sturdy, and just have it tacked together for now. Um, and now trying to figure out this, this angle, the head tube. So um, what I do want is this will be a telescoping tube, so. Um, bigger people can extend the post or extend the uh, the fork and the front wheel forward so the pegs on the front will be longer away or farther away from the seat. Um, so I'm just trying to get this angle and I kind of I kind of like it right here. I think it's a uh, it's a little Deep possibly, so I might um, might bring my wheel up a bit and let's see if I can. What I do want is my length to be well, between 40 and 42, so about 41 right now to the length, and then I'll add maybe two or three inches so it can go out, which will give about three inches on the angle. So what I'm doing is determining if I hold the tube here, it really flops left and right. But if you put it up at the top, it becomes very easy um, straight up and down. So what I kind of want to do is make it so it tracks forward. but doesn't flop. And I'm feeling it about, about 
there I like it. So, it looks like it's just about right. Now what I could do is flop the fork over, which puts my front wheel farther out. And would drop it, would drop, would increase the rate of the uh, steering tube to fork. But then I get into the fact if I turn this over, then I have surfaces that will collect uh, salt water, and I'd rather it be like this so it comes and it sloughs off and I can just wipe a flat surface and everything else underneath is protected that well so everything will just slough off down like a fin and these I, I, I increased the distance of these fins so that I can have a little room to maybe put two bolt holes so I could put a skirt I'm thinking like a uh, Maybe a 12 gallon bucket. I'll just cut a cut a circle, cut the bottom off and cut maybe a six inch strip and make it so it's a little thin there that goes around. Um, Cause you get really soaked once you start all that water coming up right at you and it gets in your face and you try and turn and it flings everywhere. So. Either I can try and mount it to my fork or just to these and we'll see. But I like this setup. I think we're going to go with this. Um, next, I need to, how I'm going to make the connection between the side rails and the down tube is I'm just going to sandwich two uh, 3 16 plates. I'm gonna sandwich and hopefully have enough room that I can put two quarter inch bolts on top and bottom. So that all it does is it goes one as well to this side, one to that side, and then you just put a bolt through. And it sandwiches this tube. So I don't need to go any two holes in this tube. Um, and also make so when I disassemble, this big U shape is not one piece. It's going to be this piece, this piece. And so disassembling, it's going to break down to a lot smaller pieces. So I'll have the axle, I'll have this half horseshoe, this half horseshoe, the axle. And then if I want to take the steering tube off, I mean, they would break down into a box maybe 18 inches wide by 18 inches tall. So that's the plan. Now I need to uh, cut out the head tube at this perfect angle. I'll tap it all in place, um, figure out some way to sit in here and make sure I like the, uh, the feel and yeah, a lot of work to get to it. Okay, thought I would just uh, give a quick explanation of how I'm going to cut the down tube. Um, so I did the same thing. Line up your planes. So you want to line up, this is square, you line that up, and then, well, sorry, this steering tube, you'll line that up, something like that, and then you look at this part, that part, 
and that goes to your down tube. So once you get those, then, which I know mine is five degrees, come over here, put it on the side, You make your measurement on the side and then on the other side. And once you have your lines down the side, then get a spare piece of the pipe you cut off, the exact diameter. And all you do is, obviously I've cut this, but you line up the diameter you just put it pretty much in the middle so imagine that see get daylight but even between about there and that's how I made my circle and all I did was connect my lines so on the bottom since it's angled it's gonna be at a five degree slope so now looks like I mean, it's not exact, but that's just a, I'll do a little bit of trim up to clear up just, it looks like these edges, but other than that, definitely a nice heavy duty weld will fill that in. Um, the ends look really good. And yeah, cool. So that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and get this pretty it up a bit and then I'll pull that and I need to make sure that this is square to the head tube so that it tracks going forward <laughs> and it doesn't uh, have any tilt I don't really have any adjustment um, like bicycle handlebars you can turn your handlebars to make the wheel go however you want but in this case we're going to be solid so all right i will figure out how that's gonna how best to measure that against what i'm thinking the top part of the fork i'll make that square um no that rotates all right let's see No, I, it won't really matter. As long as I get it vertical, that's what I need to worry about. Left and right won't really matter because it, it's just a, it's just a, just a pipe. So. tools that make this job easier. Um, all skill can go a long way. It helps to have a few handy tools, so magnets. This is a fun one. Kind of holds anything in any angle you want. Um, handy for random little pieces of metal. Small one. Square. I use a little 8 inch one and the 12 inch one um, both come in handy I use them for woodworking a lot as well um, and a miter gauge this thing's pretty sweet it determines what angles you need I use it on pretty much everything for the kite buggy marker um, this is a scribe carbide so you can scratch uh, makes it a little easier than a big eight inch thick looking uh, fat line if you don't know um, what's the best line on what side so uh, some power tools obviously the old drill um, grinder Flap disc sander, these are awesome. I use 
these to clean up. It's pretty much like a really, it's a lot of pieces of sandpaper in a flap. Um, a carbide cutting blade. Um, that's a lot for trimming, but I bought this from Northern Tool. Very cheap. It's a bandsaw, portable bandsaw. Well, you're not going to get that nice chop saw um, exact angles. If you scribe your lines right, it's really heavy, but when you angle it, you hold it right, you get a pretty clean cut. It's not loud, it's uh, no heat. You don't need a torch to cut, you don't need to grind. Um, so it, it's really handy, it's easy to use, and it's, I've built many projects with it, and uh, it can cut about 13 and a half inches, the throat cut, until you can't cut straight anymore. Um, and I use a TIG welder for this whole thing. Uh, the Everlast and yeah that's about it this project um, all right we have got a working prototype it all needs to be welded up, but the angle turned out awesome. And it sits just level. Oh, about four inches off of the center of the tire. Those are 16 inch tires. And um, that's right where I want it, right at the rim there. So um, I have lots of extendability. Right now I have it set to where I like it, which is 41 inches from the rear axle to the to the front pin. Um, I think I might trim maybe, yeah, like I said, a couple inches off. And I need to go in and tidy up some welds. Um, pretty awkward trying to solidify some of these. I got them all tacked. Um, and the down tube. But it's all squared up. I confirmed the squareness and need to put a paint job on it. I'm not sure what I'm going to paint it. Um, I'm thinking mint green and orange. Hmm. So, yeah. I uh, need to make a seat, so that'll be the next task. All right, now I'm trying to line up the down tube with the frame to make it square. Um, this is always issues that arise once you finish building that usually pertain to trying to get things square to the body. In a trike, it's not a big deal, but when you get into motorcycles and you need to be critical about angles and making sure things are squared up to like the tire so it's not tracking at, a, at the wrong angle. Um, obviously this is not a critical build, but I do like to practice being as precise as possible. So what I have here is I threw a level on it and <clears throat> since we don't have a table and ideally if people are building one of these and it's just fun to build and you don't need a whole lot of whole lot of tools. The basic tools that you do need is a big square. This is a, a 12 by 12. Um, and the basic binder gauge. Um, and just a, a 
practiced eye. So now what you see is if you look, you can see down here this bottom with this one. When I say the reveal, you want to line it up so you'll see that bottom there. That's too far, that's just right. So, what I did was I lined it up at the head tube. You can see. So, watch my reveal right, right there. You can, once the over top of each other, about there. Then look at your reveal between the level and your down tube, all the way up to there. And it, it's, you know, about a quarter inch, which that's what it is off the, uh, from the, because of the steering tube, it needs to be offset about a quarter inch. So all you do is just keep that reveal even. Boom, so you hit it there. So we know that's straight. Then grab your level, or your, uh, excuse me, your square. And what you want to do is, you know that this is straight. So put your square up there like that. So once you get your square on there, now you want to you want to see that this touches and this touches so we're right up against it you can see they're both touching so that means this straight line is square with or this straight square straight level is square with the back axle and then that 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 level is square with the down tube there you go now the down tube is square with back axle so now we need to line up the I'll throw a tack on these. This is how I want it to sit. Um, I just put the clamp on there to give it a rise. Um, and I was able to, they fit pretty exact from above, you want these to be lined up since each angle was created exactly equal. And with one, two, three, four, three bends, I mean, we're off by maybe, maybe an eighth. So, and height wise, we're off by, oh, uh, maybe a, a quarter, Maybe three sixteenths. So you can see this little nip right here. So um, oh, it's just because it's this side is resting on the. Uh, so it'll come up just a hair. All right. So we'll tack those in place, and yeah, I like the angle of that. This is what I was talking about having having it so if. The front rain doesn't gather on the top of the down to or at the top of the forks so it'll be easy to wipe off all the welds and everything will be on the inside um, you need to get some spacers for the tire keep it centered um, yeah looks pretty cool I think it's gonna be just the right I'll trim off this down tube, maybe an inch, maybe, no, I'm probably two and a half, two inches. So that'll give me quite a bit of ground clearance, but it's kind of nice to have this sticking about where your butt would be, because if you hit anything high, it doesn't, it's all, it's always a soft seat. So if you hit like a rock from under you, you want it to hit something beside your tailbone and you shatter your tailbone very easily. Um, so I'll trim that up and then the angle of these tubes will allow, when this telescope's out, 
it will drop the attack angle of the side. Oh, I don't know how much, but we'll see. I'll put a few tacks on it, then I'll loosen those bolts and we'll see what the stretched out version looks like. So, all right, here we go. All right, well, here's my jig that I got. Um, just kind of locked up the wheel and got my gauge set up to get my angle. And once I got my angle, then just kind of holding stuff. It's not exact science like a nice welding table would be, but if you, you can see the glisten off the tube. So this eyeballing down the edge, and then you see there's the reveal is the same on that side and it's not torqued. So that means it's in line with this steering tube. So I got it tacked. I'm gonna go ahead and put it down and see if, uh, see if I can sit on it and if it feels right. So see how that works. All right, so here's my slip joint connection. Um, kinda gotta be critical and this steel just happened to be the right width. Um, so I snuggled it up the tube, against the tube as close as possible. But now it'll be able to slide until I tighten the bolts up. So put it down there and it's gonna go about there. And then I'll have to line this up. I need to stabilize the fork. Um, I'll, I'll get the fork more solidified so that I can hold the down tube up against the steering column and then I'll put a few tacks and push it and make sure that it's, uh, that this tube is square with that axle and so it's going straight. Um, so I'm gonna go get a two foot level and I think that'll do it. And then I'll put some tacks on these edges. I'll make sure it's centered in the middle of that bracket. Yeah. This is what I got. It is an old LLB extra large duffel bag. And what I'm gonna do is this will be the bottom. So I was able to use one of the pockets and this heavy duty webbing. And then I just dismantled a tie down strap essentially into four different parts. So this will lasso kind of around the side members. And then this will be for, that'll be under. So if I want to store something under there, I can. Um, I took one of the straps and I sewed it right to the base of its clip, which used to be on the other side of the opening of a bag. And that's the back and those will go around the back axle to hold everything back. And then this wraps under like that. And then just run it through there, cinch it down and, and play with the tension. Um, back here, I'm not so really gonna go like, this is, will be what I sit on. And this, not exactly what I'm not sure I'll do, but if you can see, I took the, uh, this was a zipper and I just folded it over because I kind of want to 
want it to stand up a bit, maybe three or four inches for a little back support. So I've got it marked and I'm gonna kind of sew it like that. So it'll bellow up. Um, and this one, I'm gonna go, I think right with that. Even with the uh, tag, and that makes it kind of just right. So. All right, and we're gonna go sew that up. So when you're flying the kite buggy, you want to be pretty snug in the saddle. So your hips rub up against these sidebars. Uh, this was a quick solution that I thought of uh, to make it a little more comfortable and just to be able to do it without having to buy foam, I took some insulating foam for tubes um, in your home, water lines, and uh, reverse wrapped, I guess, some duct tape so that the foam would stick. And then I just wrapped the foam over this duct tape and so it won't be rotating and shifting um, while riding. Turned out pretty well. It's very comfortable. The padding does not move at all. So, success. And as you can see on the next part here, we have a uh, the foam wrapping and then straight into uh, wrapped everything with black duct tape. And, and that was it. So the inspiration, I guess, for the paint job came from the old school race car, uh, the orange and turquoise, kind of fits with the beach theme too. So had a great time doing the build. So this is my first video, as you could probably tell. So a little bit rusty, but I um, plan to try and get some of my other projects on uh, YouTube and I'm just kind of display what what can be done from just a home garage and a little bit of energy and having fun and building things. So uh, pretty much anyone could build this. You just need a welder, which you can buy anywhere off the shelf now. And all of them are very good. Um, some are better than others, but uh, you just got to start somewhere. All right, get out there and build. Thanks for watching Prism Engineer. See ya. Uh, I guess I should mention this was a uh, 2020 pandemic project. I was, we were all stuck at home with um, pretty much not able to go anywhere. And so I had, my little girl was hanging out at the house. So this was my nightly projects. And when I was shut down for work and couldn't go see clients, I just plugged away on this. It, I guess it probably took about a week um, in total. Uh, but those were spurts of hours, so um, yeah, good deal. It was a fun build.